thought I'd do a video about a lot of the stuff that I've learned over the past five years of dry fasting. And uh, first off, it really works. It solves a lot of problems. It has potential to end a lot of illnesses and diseases just by letting the body kick in and fix itself. And uh, also a great diagnostic tool. You know, my partner couldn't get into ketosis for four days when she did her last dry fast. That means she has too much sugar accumulating in the body, too much glucose. That's indicative of insulin resistance and all sorts of problems. She eventually got through it, went into ketosis and started a dry fast, but it took four days to do it. So there's your diagnostic tool. Are you packing away too much glucose? The other thing I've learned is before you go into a dry fast, because I can't tell what you've been eating and how you've been living before you start your dry fast. So I suggest some cleaning routines. You know, gallbladder flush, kidney flush, do the lemon water thing, do the grapefruit and uh, olive oil at night for the gallbladder flush, coffee enemas to stimulate the nerve that makes the uh, liver start dumping toxins. It's probably a good idea to clean yourself out a little bit. And the Russians suggest doing activated charcoal. You can find out how to do that online easy enough. And uh, again, that absorbs toxins in the bowel and that sort of stuff. And you eliminate it. Because it can't get through the uh, cells into your bloodstream. Although there have been experiments where they actually inject it and it has great effect as well. But that starts pointing to another problem, which is your gut. I've been listening to a lot of really great researchers recently and your gut will determine a lot of what's going on in your body. I've been looking into papers called the, uh, the gut thyroid axis, the gut skin axis, because depending on what's going on in your lower bowel, you uh, produce endotoxins that can get into the bloodstream and cause all these problems in distant organs. So that's one thing to do, and the easy way to do that is go on about eight weeks of sauerkraut, probiotics, probiotic enemas, that kind of stuff. See if that doesn't start fixing some of your problems too, because I notice with dry fasting, when you turn off digestion and you start turning off the bowel activity, a lot of problems go away. It means a lot of problems are probably happening from the bowel. If it happens when the bowel gets inflamed, it inflames the cells, the enterocytes that line the wall of your gut. They swell up, they get inflamed, the junctions get weak, toxins from the bowel get into the bloodstream, and go to distant organs like the thyroid causing Hashimoto's or the skin causing psoriasis or eczema. All sorts of problems happen first in the bowel and this is because <laughs> we can't live without them, they can live without us. So we're completely dependent on the health of our bowel and our gut microbiome. And we talk about this in my, my second Neogenesis book, Breaking the Time Barrier. I'm uh, about three quarters done with it. Should be out pretty soon, next month or two. And I talk about this and other issues in that. One of the things I've learned about going into a dry fast is to prevent constipation, because I don't know what you're eating before you go into a dry fast. I've gone back to the watermelon trick. Slice a watermelon in half and fillet it, get rid of the seeds. I eat that over a couple of days. To they basically bottle brush out your bowel. And that makes it easier for things to get into the bowel, things to get out of the bowel, all that good stuff. After you get rid of the, after you get out of your dry fast, of course, do the baking soda, drop yourself out of ketosis, do the bone broth, do that kind of stuff, stews and soups and broths. Get that infusion of uh, nutrients and vitamins and minerals. And uh, 
Watch your gut. After your dry fast is over, you have the ability to kick in with the fermented foods like sauerkraut and stuff and kimchi. Get that biome running before you start really getting into food and be careful what you eat. We'll talk about that in Neogenesis 1, functional immortality. Because what you eat has every bit to do with what is going on in your gut. So after the dry fast, take it easy for a couple of days. You're going to want to do all kinds of stuff, but you'll find yourself getting weak soon. The dry fasting is fantastic. The first one went really easily. Got all kinds of toxins out, all kind of gooey, gooey orange stuff in the bowel, out of the bowel rather. And subsequent ones were easier. So it's just a matter of doing it. I mean, I'm <laughs> obviously totally functional and trained in multiple techniques. So my suggestion is, if you haven't tried dry fasting, read about it. Get my book, The Phoenix Protocol. Get my book, Neogenesis, and soon Neogenesis 2. Learn about what you do when you're not dry fasting, and certainly learn about what you do while you are. I mean, having a book is so much better than trying to watch videos on YouTube. You can reread the book over and over, you can leave it in place, you can go back to it the next day. Physical books are important. Anyway, so that's the message today. Dry fasting is a great tool. It's not the only tool in the toolbox, but it's a really good one. And I will talk to you tomorrow. We're going to do a Q&A. So if you have any questions, lay them out. And I'll add them to the list. But my advice these days is keep your mind open, keep your heart open, and live fearlessly. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes? We have a message. Can you remind people to subscribe, please, sir? What now? Please. Oh, very well. If